So you want the nuts and bolts, nuts and bolts production. Mm. Uh, so how to put stuff on mm. and when to do it. Producing as well as the certain element of being an entrepreneur. What does that mean? Oh, it's putting things on from scratch. It's that simple. I'd say, look, I think, because um, you could be instructed into how to do things. Look, both are, both are completely legitimate. Uh, getting, there's, it, it really is, it, the, you can learn bad habits from both mm. uh, or you can learn good, good practice from both. Mm. So if you've got, if you're getting uh, absolute experience under the guidance of somebody who's great, fantastic. Or the opposite. So uh, I wouldn't say one over the other. Yeah. I really wouldn't. Yes, it does. I know because I've been a mentor in right. an official sense. There's arts programs that... Uh, you, uh, there's one called JUMP, for example, a mentorship program, which is not usually uh, accessed by comedians. Mm. But uh, myself and Bonnie Davies from Perth. So Bonnie Davies had been, she's, she's very on the ball. She's got a, uh, she'd been staging gigs for a bit mm. and had done a course, I think it's Tim Ferguson's comedy course. And so Tim had suggested me as a possible mentor for Bonnie. And so we thought, you know what, I think this is going to work. So we mm. put it in an official mentorship uh, application and we became kind of poster children for jump that year because right. it was a very successful collaboration. You know what? That actually doesn't help anybody. The the notion of free shows, I'm not on board with it because I, I guess I've got a certain socialist side to me, uh, which believes that workers should be paid. That's it. Uh, the arts is valuable. The arts are valuable and should be valued. So. I like to encourage that. This is actually a job for some of us. Mm. And in devaluing it constantly, oh, I just need the experience. Like, yeah, but it is actually a job. Mm. I, I, I'm on board with the artistic side of it, but ultimately uh, we deserve to be paid. We mm. deserve to be paid. Mm. The venue has to invest as well. But with that, you as the producer have to bring quality to it. Mm. So it's not about just open open the doors. Oh, by some miracle, it's going to be exceptional by mm. some miracle. No, you have to be discerning as well. You have to curate. You have to pick. Mm. You have to pick. You have to uh, put forward what you as the curator mm. has as... Uh, your your view of what comedy ought to be. I only have five spots. I'm not like a open mic night where there's dozens and dozens and dozens. Oh my God, is it ever going to stop? Mm. I, I have a certain number because it's also my view of what a show is. Because mm. I, I know what it's like from an audience point of view and from the staff point of view. Uh, when you're sitting there going, oh, God, is this ever going to end? So I'm very strict about start on time, finish at a reasonable time. I mean, varying things change mm. as well. Every now and again, my interest will be, as you do with music, food, whatever, uh, you'll think, oh, I kind of want to see a bit more of that. So, But there's, again, the balance of the, the people who are absolute surefire winners for the quality of the night and then there's variables that you, you you play with the different levels and the different styles and, and sometimes there's ulterior motives or little secret my I've got little secret things that I sometimes do in my programming mm. where it just strikes me as a good idea. Like oh, I think I booked everybody. It sometimes I'll notice when I've done something where I go oh all three of these comedians are really tall. Oh no, <laughs> I've got an idea. And so, he, so there was one night where everybody was over six foot tall except for Justin Hamilton, who was the MC. And just sort of go, hey, Harley, just leave the, the mic up. Just leave the mic stand up. <laughs> and just, just things like that. So by about the third, fourth comedian, Hamilton's going, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm just pulling the mic stand down.